What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course this is TW Motorsports and today we're gonna continue uh, the cleanup on the Trans Am. So basically cleanup and fixes. Uh, you guys saw in the last couple videos that we did under the hood. While it's looking a lot better, I wanna keep going. And so um, I just have this idea of how clean a vehicle should be and this thing is not there uh, obviously we've done a lot of stuff so far like i said under the hood um, we took some stuff off that we didn't need we hid some wires we made things look a lot nicer now i think we're going to work on the door jams and i don't know how far we're going to go in this video we'll just have to see i want to get the door jams clean i got my steamer heating up down there so we're going to steam clean the door jams because just kind of like what we had on the hood you know like the little crevices where the skin meets the door just need to be cleaned out uh, i think i'm going to remove the door panel we've got a couple issues like this um what looks like a house screw somebody put in there uh that to stop go there i've got a new piece to go there uh and so we'll just kind of see where we get i think what i'll do is i'm going to pull the door panel off make sure we get everything clean back there don't know like i said how far we're going to go if the speakers look kind of rough i may replace the speakers uh I'll probably clean the door panel up may even put some um like sound editing material behind the door panel but we're just going to see my plan today for sure though is to get the door jams done on both sides and um, then that's the reason I left the inner fenders out in the last video because we're going to be blowing stuff kind of back in there. And I'll try to get a light back here to let you guys see, you know, you can see the buildup of just debris over the years that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, there's a couple areas I may want to touch up in the door jams where it looks like people have drugged their feet maybe. But either way, that's the plan. Maybe get to the trunk jam, maybe do some other interior stuff. But for now, uh, let's see if we can get some of this stuff cleaned up. I think for starters, there's like four stickers right here we're going to take off first. I don't know why there's so many stickers, but there are. And they're just, they're old. I've never seen one with this many stickers. Be careful when you're doing this, guys, not to gouge at the glass. You kind of just want to run with it. I'm planning on at some point getting the windows tinted in this car. <clears throat> and so we'll just save the guy a little bit of work here. And these stickers look terrible. A better time to remove stickers are on a warm day, and it's probably about, I don't know, maybe 55 degrees out here in my shop right now. Got the heater going. But it is easier if you let it sit out in the sun a little bit. I also noticed that this door panel has, I mean, it's obviously been off before, but there's a crack in the bottom of it. And it's getting to the point where these parts are hard to find. Normally these door panels have a crack right about here, but for some reason the 98s didn't seem to have as big an issue with that. That looks better. 
So now what I think I'll do is I actually think I'm gonna take this door panel off. It'll make life a little easier. So let's grab some, let's grab some tools and get this thing out of place. Now I've got some Phillips screwdrivers here. We're gonna start with this piece that obviously somebody found a screw laying around at their house. Yeah, it's a self-tapping screw. That is not what goes in that, guys. But hey, people fix stuff different ways, I guess. I'm just hoping they didn't screw up where that mount. We'll just have to see when we go to put the new one in. But either way, we got another one here. This is all common stuff that breaks on these cars if you don't know what you're doing as far as taking them apart. Um, this should pop up and out. Sometimes it's broken. It's pretty common for people to break these. And mine is not, which is good. We're going to go ahead and unplug this as well. screwdriver for that but once we get what I'm surprised about is this isn't broken you kind of got to pull this um, lock piece off as you're coming apart here holy cow I don't think it's ever been off there there it comes so that goes on the lock rod, it just snaps on there. And then this guy should come off. It's got a light hooked up. And I'm gonna bet that it's probably burned out. Convertibles generally live a pretty terrible life because most people leave the tops down but a lot of times these pieces right here are cracked and so your switch um, sets in those so if they're cracked your switch wants to kind of move around so we got that out there's another Phillips here behind This one looks like the right one. It's long. We've got another one down here in the bottom of the door. And we should have another one kind of back in there. You want to make sure you get them all out because if you don't, you're going to break the door panel trying to pull it off. And you can see where my OCD sets in here because the dust and stuff that's in this makes me crazy. This looks to be the right one too. See, look at the top of that. Like, I'll clean that. And I thought there was another one back here. I may be wrong. Oh, it's... Should all be Phillips. They wanted to make it easy because these window motors go out all the time. I also brought a magnet over here. Makes your life a little easier. And I swore there was another one up here in this corner, but Oh, there is. It's kind of one of those, you have to do it by feel.
to go grab a flat blade screwdriver to finish taking this off. And then we should be able to pull this thing out of place. It's all loose now. We just need this flat blade to release this. There we go. So you can see that thing needs a good clean up. Just years of dust. So now, we got everything loose. We should be able to just lift straight up. Feels like there's something catching down here in the corner. There we go. Oh, it's got aftermarket speakers in it. Okay. Yeah, that's not the factory speaker. So I guess they used to unhook the tweeter. I didn't notice that. So, yeah, this has been off before. You know, after looking at this uh, and all the open pieces, I don't think I'm gonna put any sound deadening on this. Um, I don't wanna make, these doors are big and heavy anyway. And so I, you wouldn't think they'd be heavy because they are fiberglass, but I don't think I'm gonna gain enough, and I think I'm gonna make it a little heavy putting that stuff on, so I really, I don't even think I'm gonna mess with it. But I did want this off because I wanna clean the door panel kinda of off the car a little bit, and then I wanna clean this area up too because as we start to clean the jams, all this stuff's gonna kinda of fall down, and uh, we, really, we really don't want that. We wanna start from the top and work our way down, and all that junk, that we would essentially clean off this is gonna fall down at the bottom. And so we wanna get that first, if that makes sense. So just like we did on a lot of the cleaning, you know, I'm gonna kinda of start with some super clean and um, some detail brushes, toothbrush, some towels. And I'll probably go over it a couple times, but you can see how gross this area is up here. Pretty nasty. And I'll probably time lapse a lot of the cleaning here on the door. So you guys don't have to watch me eke through this, but. It is something that I want to do. And it looks like somebody at some point has tried to use some glue up here to help hold this in place. I may have to go grab some adhesive remover on this. One thing you find when you work on other people's projects is um, their ways of fixing things. It may not always be the right way, but to them it may be. This is why I work on my own stuff. Let's get that time lapse going.
at this point we got all the door jams clean. Um, I couldn't show you guys really up in here, but um, there, there's just no good way to get the camera in there and with the steam and whatnot. But a majority of what I did here is I used my super clean a toothbrush and scrubbed it to kind of loosen the dirt. And then all I did with my steam cleaner is basically just wash it out. So, you know, honestly, if you had like a water pick, that would probably work or just a garden hose set on a, like a low pressure and you could just wash that stuff out. That's that's the reason I didn't put those inner fenders in because we're, you know, we're kind of blowing stuff in there. So I we'll had to clean that back out. But um, all in all, they came out pretty good. I, I still gonna put some um, treatment on this to make it kind of brighten up a little bit. And, uh, but another thing I noticed, and I'm gonna have to take a few more things apart is this trim right here on the outside of the door is loose. And I also noticed that this is broken. I think I have another one of these. This is like a piece of felt that guides the window kind of up and down. And you want that to be good, especially if you're gonna tent them because if this is bad, like what it is, it's broken. Chances are it's probably in the door for one thing, but um, it's gonna scrape up your new tent. So in order to get that piece off on the outside, I think I'm gonna have to take off these 10 millimeters that hold this on, which Look guys, you can't get back in here and clean this. So I'm gonna use some compound on this just by hand and clean this area off. You can see that it's kind of stained on the backside of the mirror because you can't get up in there and clean that the way these mirrors are designed. So that'll give me a good time to do that as well. Now that we have the mirror off, I'm gonna have to roll down the window. So I'm gonna hook up my switch back, go grab the key. I don't have the battery hooked up either. So I'll hook it up. We'll get the window down and see what's going on with that. But one thing I do wanna show you guys is I ran my magnet down inside the door and I found that piece of felt that's broke off. You can see where it broke there. I also found four screws and I found rivet heads. Now. What this is, is that means that this um, window motor has been replaced before because they are riveted in from the factory. So you have to uh, drill out the rivets. Uh, it's just crazy that somebody would leave them in the door because you're gonna hear that when you shut the door. I, I hate those noises. So I always, uh, I noticed I, there was a screw when I was cleaning the bottom. That's why I ran that magnet through there. And, um, but these are not magnetic. Luckily they were back here towards the back so I could see them anyway. So let's go grab the key, get the window down and see if we can figure out what's going on here. I also wanna clean that. I don't know if you guys can see that chunk of dirt right there. Um, that's just gonna uh, be a burden anytime this thing gets wet. When you roll up the window, it's gonna be absolutely disgusting. Now with the window down, um, I just pulled on this corner a little bit and it came up like what you see. Uh, there's a couple clips that are supposed to be along here and some of them are there and some of them aren't. I noticed that um, one of them fell out and what that does is it, it sets on the door panel but then or it sets on this piece of trim and then it clips in in the door keeping it snug so i'm gonna i'm gonna take these two guys out up here these two 10 millimeters and see if we can get this whole piece out i think it's separate from this but i think you have to have this out in order to get it so we're just going to give it a shot here we're going a little deeper than i honestly wanted to go on this thing I also do have another one of these um, felt tabs that I'm going to put on before we go back together. But I don't know, it's just one of those things that if I can fix it while it's apart, this is the best time to do it. The window, that this piece flapping around is probably going to make noise going down the highway, which would really annoy me. We'll see what happens when we get this loose. I think this whole corner piece will come out, but I may be wrong. I 
I haven't taken one this far apart in a while. Yeah, I think there's another one somewhere. Maybe I could just work with it right here. The clip's not actually missing there. Somebody's tried to glue it back on. But I am missing a few clips. And I heard one fall down in the door. And I'm going to hope that the other ones are down there too. But I would have thought earlier when I ran my magnet through I would have got it. So. We've got one here. We're missing the one here. I've got one in my hand. This one's on. Not very good, but it is. Um, this one's missing. This one's on the car. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna fish into the door and see if we can figure out where that other one went since that piece isn't coming out. I think there's another uh, bolt down further that pulls that out, but I don't know that we necessarily need it out to fix this Okay, so besides those two tens, there's just one other one. I decided it I, I feel like maybe it's gonna be easier to do it this way. I don't know. We'll see So you can see what I'm talking about these clips and we are missing Like these seem to be in there pretty good Of course the mirror kind of cinches them down, but we're missing a couple and then they just I'm not sure if it's just because of age and the door shutting over the over time. Um, they've just came out of place, and so we need to get them back into place. And there's kind of little ears on them. I'm hoping that I can press them down in and kind of bend those ears over and get them back lined up. So you can see here. But I need to get this other one off the car, which would give me here. I'm still missing one that I'm assuming is in the door somewhere. So a little bit of bad news. Um, I don't, I don't have the other clip. And so as much as I don't want to, I'm going to order a new one. They do still make these and look, this is all weathered anyway. I'm trying to talk myself into not buying a new one, but there's just no way the clips they're they're really kind of, put in from the factory. I tried to bend the tabs over and they're, it's just not happening. Now, could I glue them down? Yeah, but I, I just don't think they'd hold is the problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the clips off this one in case I'm ever missing another one and maybe I just have to glue one. The other side seems fine, but look, sometimes you gotta order this stuff. And uh, I'll list this obviously in the description down below. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean the top of the door off and get it all ready for when we get it to go ahead and put it in. The other thing I can do though, is since I've got another one of these felt pieces, we might as well go ahead and put it in. It's just a 10 millimeter here. Let me go grab it real quick. I don't know why that broke, but that may be something, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on, but it may be something we have to adjust as we roll up the window. So we don't want it to um, necessarily push the glass out uh, but we want it to rest up against it. One of the things that's a good idea to do is just take a brush and knock out any dirt or debris that might be in these things. And hopefully you guys have a, like a salvage yard or something close to you. And maybe I can find even one of those pieces, but since I can order it new, yeah, we'll do that. Let's get this thing just snug down for now. Like I said, we'll adjust it a little bit as we get things back in place. You don't want to over tighten this guys. It is going into a fiberglass door, but that should be good for now. I'm going to take this one out as well, mainly just to clean it like I just did the other one. You can see how that 
felt just over the years gets dirt and debris in it. It's kind of like vacuuming carpet. It's kind of fluffing it back up. Because there's nothing more I hate than um, putting window tint on these things, rolling your window down a couple times and having a scratch in your window tent. So good idea to clean these since we got everything apart. And then, like I said, I'm gonna clean the door. I won't show you guys that. I'm just gonna clean the top side of the door a little bit. And then we may just move on to the door panel while we wait to get that other part or to get that new piece of trim. Plan here is we're gonna clean up some parts. That way when we get this new piece of trim, we're ready to go back together. So I'll probably continue the time lapse here. I'm gonna grab all the little interior trim pieces that we took off the door panel, get those nice and clean. Probably put a little bit of coating on them, my chemical guy stuff. That way we're ready to go back together, like I said, when we get our new part. how nasty that channel is your window goes up in that Now that we got that passenger side door, um, I'm gonna come back and do the panels here in a little bit, but uh, I, want, I wanted to go ahead and do the back. So you can see I opened the trunk and 
moved my uh, drop cloth a little closer. The area up here isn't too bad. I can just wipe it out, which is good. But all the stuff that's gonna run off the top of this, uh, like you can see the buildup here in the corners and the edges. Now look, fiberglass doesn't finish really well. So, you know, some of that may not be staining, but there is a ton of junk in there that I wanna clean out of those rails and uh, get this nice and clean. So we're gonna start at that point. Um, I'm gonna try to keep the trunk covered somewhat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be cleaning the inside at some point, um, but I'm not gonna get really crazy here. So I'm gonna just kind of work my way around, around with the brush and the steam cleaner. I also think we can get some of this, this is just from it sitting on the rubber, and we can clean that off. And once we get it cleaned, it hopefully it will stay cleaner than what it is. But I've also noticed that a couple of these guys, under the hood even, were kind of messed up. This one's just, looks like it's just screwed in wrong. But yeah, it's not in the greatest of shape. But uh, anyway, we're gonna clean this up. Well, pretty obvious that it was nasty back here. You can see it all over my uh, drop cloth, but I uh, got it. I've got all these areas cleaned out. Now look, we're gonna get it dirty again when we wash it obviously, but um, I wanted to get the big stuff out. I can then generally wipe this out once I detail it. Uh, but we've got the trunk. I will tell you the trunk lid is kind of like uncoated, like the underside of the hood. Now the actual hood itself is, is coated and painted with clear, uh, but there's some staining on here. I probably could buff it out, but I don't think it's going to look that great if I do. So I'm going to leave it be, and uh, we're just going to concern ourselves with um, going back to the door panels at this point, I think. I am going to lift this up, clean that front ledge. Like I said, it wasn't too bad, um, but we're done here in the trunk, at least for now. So I know what you're probably thinking. Why are you cleaning the back of the door panels? Well, I'm really not going to get real crazy. Just wiping some of the dust off. Uh, also, remember this felt. It rubs up against your window. Just kind of want to go over it, make it a little nicer. And I noticed that this is the passenger side. We've got one clip right here that's borderline on being busted. But, like I said, just want to give it a good clean mainly wiping the dust off. These door panels look to be in decent shape. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I told you earlier about the cracks, but the, um, generally this, if it's been wet, you can see it's, it's actually not had the windows left down or something crazy and um, pretty good shape. But That other one does have a small crack in it. Holy cow, knocked the board over. But that's, that's pretty much all I wanna do on this side. 
Then we're going to flip it back over. I'm going to get another towel and uh, I'll probably get clean my little toothbrush out and we're going to work on getting this cleaned up. Mainly, you know, just brightening this up a little bit. It's just got a lot of dust on it. This area right here should come out. Um, you know, it's going to be covered, but hey, look guys, spend the time, do it right. Let's go grab my brush and um, some cleaner. Now, I don't really want to soak this because there is cardboard behind it, remember? We're just trying to get, look at that, brand new towel here. Just trying to get that cleaned off. Now this plastic, we can soak it a little bit more. There's gonna be a ton of dust and dirt, especially, like I said, guys, with this being a convertible, this poor thing, and it, the top has been left open, that's why we had to replace the top. Um, you're, you're gonna have a lot of dust here. A lot of stuff to clean out that you may not have if you had a hard top. Look at that, just going over that one time. It's absolutely disgusting. So my plan here is to go this direction and we'll flip it over and do the top side. going to have a bunch up there as well. I'm kind of letting my towel tell me when I'm ready to move on. When I stop pulling up dirt, then we'll know it's time to go to a different section. bad. Got that door panel cleaned up. Got some dressing on it. Um, looking pretty shiny down here. You can see it. Uh, but we're going to put it back on and uh, we'll probably touch it up a little bit when, it, when it's on the door. It's really hard to clean these guys without um, a ton of light and with it being stationary it wants to move around a bunch especially when you scrub on it but either way i think we got it where we want it we got the door cleaned up uh so let's get it back in place so i struggled to get the door panel on as you can see but um i'm gonna have to take it back off and here's the reason why i i have the mirror off to clean it and um, i also have these pieces off like that are kind of window guides and so those all have to go back on before so I mean, it looks better. I can still go on and touch up the areas that I found. You can see it's really shiny right now. I, I'm just letting it set with that coating on it. Uh, and I'm using that Silk Shine from Chemical Guys. I really like this stuff. While it, it looks really shiny to begin with, you can put it on there, let it kind of soak in and, and get in the material, and then you can wipe it down and it's just a nice sheen. It looks new, it doesn't look you know, greasy like this, because this, this won't work for me. I don't like, you know, like a greasy look. Um, I like more of a just clean and matte looking finish. Well, I'm still waiting for some parts uh, to get the door panels back together, mainly that piece of trim. And um, now nah, there's, there's more, but anyway, so we've got a ton of work to do on the dash here. There's a ton of dust, ton of dirt. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed when I bought this thing is the, while the odometer works, the backlight is burned out. And so I've got a buddy, which I'll list in the description down below, who's going to replace that uh, or fix it. I'm gonna send it to him. And uh, so we need to get this piece off, which should just be clipped on. 
and it's kind of a pain, but we need to get it out of the way anyway because honestly there's probably a quarter inch of dust back here. I want to pull this fog light switch out if at all possible. In the early GM days, they didn't really have a great method of unplugging things. They just basically you uh, push the button out. And so I'm hoping without breaking this, I can get this out. May have to go get a pair of pliers, but we need to pull this guy out of the way. And then we should have access to a couple seven millimeters to get this thing out. I don't want to break this, although I think I have another one. One of the clips is broken off of it already, actually. I bet there's a a way to unplug that down below. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to take, we're just gonna go ahead and take this bottom panel off, which there's a couple Phillips screws in it and then probably a couple seven millimeters along the bottom. Got that bottom panel off and gross. It's got a ton of junk on it. Anyway. Let's continue with what we were trying to do, which was get this out of place. Man, it's a close fit. Like I said, it's, it's actually broken. There is a, see how I got this far enough out that I can see there's a clip on it. We'll see if we can get it unplugged, but I really, really like to get this thing out first. I thought you could do that without pulling this little clip off the side of the column, but maybe I'm wrong. Tell you what, let's just pull this clip off. Well, I say, there's a little clip um, right, above, right below the tilt mechanism here that generally pulls straight off. I've got part of it unclipped, but it feels like it's holding on another section. I don't want to break it, but I think it's already broken. Oh, there's a clip on it, that's why. Yeah, it had been, look, there's a piece of two-sided tape on it. Just the bottom clip, it looks like it's all that's broken. I may have another one of those too. Now maybe we can get this thing out. There we go. So, this is all wrapped up. There we go, got it off there. Um, you can see there's a clip broken right here. And that seems to be the only one broken. I might be able, it's still in here. I might be able to just glue that back on. In fact, I know I can glue that back on. Probably do that. That thing needs to be cleaned separately anyway. So now we should have, uh, let's see here. Four, seven millimeters to pull this cluster out. You're gonna need a pretty decent size extension. And you may even need a magnet because chances are you're probably going to drop, probably going to drop something. I should probably go get a magnet now. Man, this thing needs vacuum so bad. The, the carpet seems to be in okay shape. Um, 
but there's a ton of, I mean, this is normal for a convertible though, guys. You got the top down, dust flying everywhere. This person stored this with the top down in their garage and their garage was not what I would call spotless. So either way, we'll get all these out and then we'll see what we need to disconnect on the backside because it's been a while since I've had one of these out of here. Woo. All right. Yeah, seems to be good. Um, I don't know if he has to crack this open, but I may have him just like, there's, a, there's some dust and dirt in this. Obviously I'm gonna clean the outside off, but yeah, see how it unplugs as you're coming out? And I don't wanna, I, if he can update it to like um, some sort of LED backlight, but I still want the red, you know, like the original Pontiac red. Um, I don't wanna change anything like that. But since we've got this out, I'm probably going to take this time to clean this area, at least just vacuum it out. We may go ahead and pull like our switch out. I, I just like to get behind every little nook and cranny. Well, my light just died from in here, but I want to show you guys one other thing. This, obviously our dash panel is bad and I got to figure out what I want to do here. But what I'm going to do is, since you have this out, you can reach up in here and kind of push from the bottom. And that kind of keeps you from maybe breaking it in a billion other pieces. Because if I can fix this uh, and maybe have my upholstery guy cover it, that would be awesome. But chances are, it probably won't be the case. These are getting to the point where they're really tough to find. And I probably should have the pillars off. But I don't. Yeah, I'm going to have to take the pillars off. We can unplug our little light here, though. You just twist it and it comes out. I think I'm going to have to uh, pop the top here a little bit. Get the pillars out of the way. So I'm gonna have to hook up the battery. So I'm hoping that the top, I haven't really put it down since I got it replaced. I know it had, my, it, the battery is weak on this thing, so it's not giving me what I want, but that'll give me enough room to sneak in here and grab these um, two little screws for the pillars and then we'll snap it back down into place. I know it works because I watched him uh, put it down but he did say that the battery was really weak and like I had told you guys when I did under the hood uh, we're going to have to replace the battery here soon. This is the joys of owning a convertible. Should have a couple clips here too, I imagine. And then you should be able to pull straight back. Got your little vent here. But this sets in that channel of that upper um, dash support. Now that we got those out, I should be able to uh, lift on this guy and get all the clips loose. Pull it out of the way. Oh, these things are so flimsy, guys. Really terribly made. I don't know. I, you know, I've seen guys fix these and then cover them but mine's got like a break in it it's not just a crack there's a well like a piece just fell out there so i don't know 
We may see what he can do. If not, we're gonna have to see if we can find another one. I figured it might be a good time since we got that out to uh, clean the bugs. I don't know if you guys can see the bugs in there and there, there's some hair in there. And then like obviously that trail of grime on the leading edge there. Uh, but since we've got this out, I wanna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna at least give it a quick vacuum. It looks a lot better. I went over it a couple times with the vacuum. Uh, I cleaned that little leading edge off and then kind of some of the top of the dash. But we'll get more into that later. Uh, I don't know whether it'll be in this video, but obviously we're going to clean this whole thing. But either way, uh, one of the things that I was waiting on, I told you guys, you know, I was waiting on something and um, that's why I went ahead and did what I did. But so I was waiting on a couple things. First of all, you know, we're missing this piece. Remember, it was broken on the other side. So I'm waiting on it to come in. It's supposed to be, it was supposed to be here today, but it, it didn't show up. <clears throat> but I did get two other things that I was waiting on. One of those pieces is the little triangle piece that goes on the inside um, of this. So like on the inside, the trim piece, I was waiting on that. Um, that can go in later, but um, I was also waiting on a new buffer. And I'm, <laughs> I know my wife bought me a buffer and the, look what she bought me is awesome, but um, I needed something to get in like little close areas. So with the mirror on this car, we cannot buff about this much um, of the car, right? So you just can't get that pad up in here. The other thing is the mirror uh, that I've got sitting right here. We can't buff on it either because of these little intricate spots. So what I did was I bought a mini buffer and it comes with a three inch and a two inch backing plate, but I also bought a one inch backing plate. So what you see here are a two inch pad and a one inch pad. And I'm really excited about this because I've never had the ability to um, buff in like tight areas with any of the buffers I've ever had. So remember I had a Griots before, my wife bought me that Rupes. And while the Rupes is a better buffer, I was not, for, for little areas like this, this will do great. Uh, I didn't need to spend uh, you know, $400 on a mini Rupes. Uh, maybe down the road we'll do that, but for what I'm doing, like your garage guy, um, this will work great. So I'm really excited to do that. So what we're, what I'm planning on doing guys is I'm gonna tape off a section, um, probably, I'm gonna probably tape this whole piece of trim off right here. And we're gonna buff the door probably about two inches down all the way across. And then I'm going to buff the mirror and I will just time lapse that for you guys. I'm just gonna be using some M105. I don't even know that I'll go to any other compound to be honest with you because it's such a small area. Um, if, it's, if there's a bunch of hazing, I might. Uh, but as far as like the mirror, I wanna do the whole mirror it, and at least the backside while the mirror's off before we put it back on. So that's what I was waiting on. Um, and then obviously the mirror on this side, the mirror has to go on before the door panel can. And then the mirror has to go on after that piece of trim is here. So we're gonna have to um, just go ahead and buff. We'll just buff both sides. And then when that piece comes in, we could snap it on and start going back together with at least this portion. So I'm gonna set you guys up on the tripod again. We'll time lapse some of this buffing. I'm, I'm pretty excited to use this. It's got a one inch standoff or a two inch standoff for the one inch backing plate. So that should give me ample room and it should be easy to handle. So real quick, you can see um, that I've got the one inch or two inch standoff, but I got the one inch correction pad. I've got a gray pad, which is for like heavy correcting. They make different ones, but I figured this would be enough for what we're doing. I'm just using some M105 and um, I'm hoping guys that I can hold this kind of with one hand. You know, that's another thing is I wanted something smaller that I could hold with one hand because this part's loose. And so when it's not mounted to something, it's gonna be a little more cumbersome than you know if it's bolted to the car but the problem being is like this area especially this area um i won't be able to get with it bolted to the car the way the car is designed so uh let's see how it works i'm excited to try it hopefully uh hopefully it works well it's got a i don't know the trigger's pretty far back i know we can lock it on there's a lock here um so i'm hoping maybe Hoping maybe we can have some control here. It's gonna be it's gonna be more more tough than like I said with it bolted to the car, but it's just crazy to think that you can get these small areas. That's what I'm excited about. We're gonna start probably in this area here. And I'm gonna go really slow speeds and um, just kind of see how it works. And we're gonna have to prime that pad quite a bit. I think it's gonna take a little bit, but. Let's give it a shot.
on speed one here. They're pretty slow. The perfect speed for a part that's loose, I feel like. Let's see what we got here. I think it did, I think it did a pretty crazy good job for especially an area like that. Oh my goodness, yeah. Like all the little Mars and stuff are gone just in that short amount of time, guys. So I think it's gonna work well. Like I said, we'll just, we'll time lapse a majority of this, but golly, I'm excited. Yeah, I think I probably will switch over to the orange pad when I'm finished and just, um, cause this put, it's kind of hazy. You guys probably can't see it on camera, but yeah, let's keep going. Holy cow, what a difference. Now I will tell you guys that the pad, um, these little pads, you can't run them fast, right? So you can see, look at the shape of my pad. It's uh, it's moved off the, the piece a little bit, the backing plate. So you do have to move it back and forth. But other than that, you know, don't go at high speeds. You can't run this thing out. I'm on two is the fastest I've got it, but man, what a difference in this area right here. So at this point, I on the mirror, guys, I didn't show you all of it, but I mainly went around the back, the edges that we couldn't get with it bolted to the car because it's so cumbersome trying to hold it um, and buff on it at the same time. If I had somebody else to hold it or I could put it in a vise or something. So I just concentrated on the areas that were up close to the car, the bottom, and uh, so the front of it, I'm gonna try to get once I bolt it to the car. But at this point, I'm gonna peel this um, tape off and um, I think we're good to put the mirror back on. Now you can see why I wanted to do that ledge, right? And then the back here, because we there's no way to get in back here behind the mirror. And so I've got it bolted back on, just 10 millimeters, guys. Those three 10 millimeter nuts go on there. Make sure you plug it in. I don't have the door panel back on yet, but I did um, put the little rubber pieces that kind of guide the window on the outside. I did put those back in, didn't show you. But either way, now that we've got um, the mirror on, I can, it, it's sturdy. So I can now do this area right here. I did the bot, all of the bottom. I did all that backside. I'm probably also gonna do the mirror face because it's got some water spot etching on it that I think I can get off. But uh, yeah, this when stuff is attached, it makes it a lot easier. The other thing here is you can see this area right here. I might have been able to get up here, uh, but I'm glad I went back. I went back all the way to about right here. And uh, I'm glad I did that because there's no way to get the buffer in there. Now my bigger buffer, I might be able to get the pad up here, but that spot like right up close to the trim, uh, you're just not going to be able to get with the mirror on. Now that we went over it with the M105, I am gonna go ahead and do some M205. There is some streaking in this that I think this will take out. And to be honest with you guys, I probably didn't even need to do the 105. These mirrors were not that bad, but let's just shine them up a little bit more. And then uh, I'm probably gonna go to the other side and do this whole rail since we don't have that trim in the way. Um, and I'm getting my, should be getting that piece of trim tomorrow. 
so it can go back together. But switch to an orange correcting pad. And I know this looks like a lot of compound, but this pad has got nothing on it. This stuff is way easier to wipe off than the 105. Still gonna go at a pretty slow speed though. Just going over the areas we've already went over. This covers a little more than I thought it would here. not going to take much. This is going to be the cleanest mirror on a 98 Trans Am in America. That's for sure. I'm way too particular, guys. Once I finish this, I am going to put some of that ethos that I put on my son's car. It's just all I have here. It just seems to last. So um, we will put something on it. I don't, I'd love to do a ceramic coating, but I just don't have the time for that. And I don't have any product that's I'm really in love with. If you guys know of any ceramic that you really like, um, ceramic coatings out there that are a little easier to apply um, in this kind of environment, let me know. Well, big surprise guys, uh, my trim piece hadn't came in yet. Post office, you know how shipping works takes forever you think you're gonna get it the post office tracking system is terrible anyway I was getting ready to send this thing you know I told you guys I was gonna send this thing to a buddy of mine to have um, a few things looked at come to find out all, all that all that was wrong with this gauge cluster was that my uh, miles per hour or sorry my um, back the backlight of the miles on the car was not working and I don't know why I didn't remember that these have bulbs in them. So I literally twisted this thing out and guess what? It's just a burnout bulb and they're just 194. So what I'm going to do is I've got some 194s here. I'm going to make sure that my hands are clean. I got gloves on and we're going to twist each one of these out, making sure we don't have any other ones burn out. Then I'm going to clean this thing up I'll probably off camera. Not a whole lot to it here. Clean out the little tray that it sets in back there because there's a bunch of dust back behind it. And then we're going to plug it in and give it a test because, um, I'm pretty sure that's all it was. It's just that, uh, there wasn't anything else not working. Everything seemed to be working fine. So let's just give this a try. And then, um, literally guys, if you just twist these guys, of course it's going to make a liar out of me and be a real pain, but let's go to this one. Let's get a pair of pliers. <laughs> so we twist, pull it out and look. That's all there is to it. So then we can just put that one back in. I'm probably gonna, look how dusty those bulbs are. I'll probably clean those off or maybe even replace every single one of them. That way we know we've got good bulbs. I really need a pair of rubber. Um, I need a pair of rubber needle nose pliers for stuff like this. Anyway, make sure that you get them twisted all the way back like that, where they click. That way they don't accidentally fall out. So as you guys can see, I got my 194 bulbs in and I replaced the dash and I was a little concerned because the miles didn't light up first time. And I don't know why my camera wasn't recording, but um, I had that those plugs on the back, you can turn them too far. And so that's what the deal was. But now look, it's all lit up and we could tell how many miles are on the thing. So that's the light that was burned out. The one that I, like I said, was going to send um, this thing out to get fixed. And it's literally just plug and play, guys. So at this point, I've cleaned a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and knock out the top side of the dash. I don't know if there's any 
good or great way to show you guys. I'm just gonna use my detail brush and some of that same coating, um, that chemical guys coating on the dash. And I'm gonna go over it. I'm gonna cover this up because I did kind of clean this off really well before I put it back in. And I will tell you guys, it is a little bit easier to put it in in two pieces. So the glass, the outer glass, I took it off to clean um, the dust out of it. Uh, but the downside is you really need to turn the car on to get all the gauges to go up. Uh, that way you can snap that back on. So that is what I did. Uh, but anyway, I'm, like I said, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I'll show you guys. I got my light in here. I did kind of go over this and dust some of this, but it's still not to my liking. And I may, you can pull these vents out, but man, I, I don't want to break them. And I think I might be able to just spray my stuff in there and get a, you know, a, a good amount of coating on it. I don't know. One of these vents is broken. Matter of fact, it just fell in there. I don't know. I may, I may pull them out. There's, there's little clips on the side that you can kind of see back in here. And then these vents pull out. That's probably the best way to do it. It's probably what I ought to do. So this is worth um, talking about, guys. Um, so your vent is actually two piece. You've got this front piece. You can see the little clips. Um, there's two little pieces right there that you're gonna kind of pry loose. So if you move this over, it should kind of pull out of that. Or you can push from the inside if you can get a screwdriver in there and push. Uh, this one was, I pulled some of the clips out of it, but you can see what I'm talking about here on the side of this. That's where it clips in. So if you can pull it out of that, that's best because then you have a little more access to these clips. These clips are what keep it in the dash. So in this little ring here. So if you guys have ever wondered how those come out, and I do have, I think I have another one of these. So I don't think it's gonna be a big deal if that one's broken. If it is, then I'll order another one. But I, I think I wanna get them out. Just look at all the dust in there. It's just absolutely crazy. Uh, like I said, convertibles. That's just kind of how it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead, get these the rest, all the rest of these out. Sometimes if you get one out, you can reach around and it kind of help unplug the clip. Um, so if you do break one, it's probably best to pull the middle one out first. That way you can kind of reach around the sides and grab the other ones. I'll show you guys what I've got on the dash. I went ahead and went over it um, with some cleaner. You can see it looks way better. Went around with my detail brush, cleaned it up a little bit, hit the steering wheel. Uh, it looks really shiny. I'm gonna knock that off, some of the sheen, but you can, uh, Chemical Guys is what I'm using. I'll list it in the description down below. But either way, I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from that. And we got this piece in. So you can see it in the plastic wrap down there. Uh, I'm gonna go grab it. It comes with the new clips, which I'll show you guys. And it is still available to order new, which is awesome. Um, but now that we've got that all paint corrected, we can go ahead and snap that back in place. So check it out. All new clips. All in place. And guys, th these clips have been over from the factory. So if the chances of you getting them back in if they're broke off, uh, are pretty are pretty slim, but you do need to make sure that all your clips are gone off the old one. So a lot of times your clip will stick to the door. You do not want that in place while you're trying to obviously snap this one in. So what we need to do is we need to kind of hold the window back a little bit and see if we can get it started maybe up front. Actually, we won't even mess with the window until we get um, one of the clips started up front here. And it should, oh, I should open the door. Um, but it actually clips on the inside here. Let's see if we can get it started anyway. And it's gonna be kinda hard not to scratch the paint. Just be very careful, take your time. Almost think it'd be, yeah. We may be better off getting it in the channel all the way and then trying to snap it in. Way easier to take out than put in, I'll tell you that.
And then we, once we do that, I'm hoping, guys, that it's going to go ahead and snap in place. At this point, guys, I think we're going to end this video. I know, and look, sorry it ran so long, but uh, I feel like we got a lot accomplished. Obviously, we got a lot of the interior parts out. We got all the jams clean. Uh, we got that new trim piece in, and uh, the mirrors kind of cleaned up. The areas under the mirrors on the doors buffed, and uh, we, st we still got a lot to go. But like I said, um, I think I'm going to end it here because I'm still waiting on a couple little things. And um, if you guys are wondering why I didn't put the door panels back on, the main reason, guys, is I'm, I'm, I actually have a window tinting appointment for this thing, and it'll just be way easier for him, and I can put those on later. But I think in the next video uh, on this thing, we are going to start on some suspension stuff. And uh, I think it'll probably take a couple videos because of the amount of stuff that I'm wanting to do. Uh, but you guys will just have to stay tuned and check it out. But we are getting there. Slowly but surely, we are getting there. But if you guys are enjoying this content, if you are enjoying the cleanup and fixes on this thing, please go down there and hit the comments and let me know about it. Of course, hit the thumbs up button as well. But if you guys are not subscribed, please go down there, hit the subscribe button. Of course, ring the bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.